Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video I'll be showing you the basics of splines, uh, how to create splines and uh, some things you can do with splines. And if you don't know what spline is, it's uh, these paths right here. And Illustrator would be like a vector path, you know, the path that creates circles uh, and all kinds of things. Uh, but in Cinema 4D with splines you can create geometry, uh, you can uh, you know, attach things to splines, you can animate on splines. So a lot of things are involved when it comes to splines and I will show you the basics of uh, how to use them today. Uh, but before we begin, I just want to show you that uh, if you're doing anything flat, like a, like a logo, uh, you know, something like a circle like this, and then you have stuff inside, uh, what you can do is you can create your splines or your paths inside Adobe Illustrator. And then uh, what you can do, instead of creating your splines in here, it just it's, it's a little bit more complicated you know uh, Adobe Illustrator is made for creating paths and splines you can you can do it in, uh, inside the uh, Cinema 4D as well but I just recommend uh, doing it inside Adobe Illustrator and then merging or importing those splines inside Cinema 4D and then from there you can extrude and so on uh, so let me just show you an example of uh, the file that I did inside Adobe Illustrator and then I'm gonna use this plugin that's called uh, CV ArtSmart, which is a free plugin from uh, uh, Cinema 4D, and all you do is uh, you create your Adobe Illustrator file if you know how to use Adobe Illustrator, and then uh, you can just import, as as you can see here, and then you can just choose the file that you did. Uh, so let me just do, for example, uh, this chess chess pieces. Uh, let's do open, click OK. As you can see, uh, perfect splines from Adobe Illustrator is here now. And then from there, uh, let me just uh, make this editable. Uh, let me just get one of the splines out of here, for example, this one. And uh, this would be another example where you can do with splines. I'm going to use, uh, it's called, let's see, yeah, this, this option right here. It pretty much uh, takes the spline and revolves around a spline and creates geometry. So let me just drop this path inside. Uh, our uh, object here, green object, and right now it's uh, the spline is not centered. That's why we're getting this result. Uh, but let me just move the spline over. Let me just zoom in here so you can see better. Just like this, and there you go. We we got a nice. Uh, little object out of the spline that I created inside Adobe Illustrator. Uh, but this, this video is not about Adobe Illustrator, so if you know how to use Adobe Illustrator, just use this plugin that's called CV ArtSmart, and then from there, whatever you create inside Adobe Illustrator, you can bring it in, um, just import it, and then you have all kinds of splines and all kinds of controls, and uh, you can extrude, make all kinds of objects. Uh, I, I hope you get the point. Uh, but anyway, uh, when it comes to splines, uh, you have a few different options. Uh, as you can see for type, we have a Bezier, Cubic, Akima, B-Spline, and so on. Uh, you know, a Bezier is like a, is equivalent to, um, you know, clicking. Let me just show you, for example, if you go to top view. And let me grab the pen tool. As you can see, these little handles, this is what uh, Bezier is all about. You just dr uh, click and drag, click and drag, and uh, you can create handles and so on. And that's uh, how you create splines or a path inside Adobe Illustrator. And that's what Bezier is. And th there's other types as well, but I don't really use them. I just use uh, either Linear or uh, the Bezier. And uh, it's the most co comfortable and easy to use. And uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, the other important um, parameter is uh, intermediate points. And uh, what it does, you're not going to, if you create a spline, let me just show you. If you create a spline and uh, try to play uh, with these points, you're not going to see anything happening. But that's because you have to, uh, you know, either enter uh, point mode or you have to create an object and actually use the spline inside the object, like uh, extrude. Uh, what else do we have here? Sweep, loft, and so on. You have to use the spline inside uh, one of these green objects, and then from there you're going to see what intermediate points uh, do. Uh, so let me just show you. Let me just delete this. And uh, as you can see right now, I have um, broad shading uh, activated. So we, we can see all the uh, shading on our object. 
And uh, as you can see here right now, the intermediate points are set to adaptive. As soon as you change to anything else, uniform, now you can see the changes in points. Uh, before you couldn't see, and that's why I said you have to put, in, uh, put the spline inside uh, one of the green objects. So uniform gives us this result, and you can control how, how much detail you want inside your uh, object. Uh, then we have natural as another way of controlling uh, the detail, as you can see. And then we have uh, subdivided as another way that you can uh, control uh, you know, the points and uh, how your object is subdivided. And then uh, you also have uh, none and then adaptive. Adaptive is like your default. And uh, this is the only two options you have to worry about when it comes to splines. You have your uh, type, then you have your intermediate points, and that's basically it. That's how you control how your spline looks and how your points are distributed and so on. Uh, but basically, when it comes to splines, this is, let me just undock this so you can see. These are all your default splines, you know, your flowers, your circles, and so on. Uh, you have even text here that you can uh, take and then extrude. So as you can see, the text is here. And if I want to render this, nothing will happen because it's a spline, it's invisible. Uh, but as soon as you drop it inside, for example, an extrude object, it becomes uh, like a 3D object that you, uh, that you can see, modify, and so on. And uh, these, uh, these uh, shading points, or these lines that you see here, uh, these are in intermediate points that I was talking about before. So each spline has those uh, that function. So as you can see, you have your intermediate points, and then I can control how um, you know the mesh is uh, constructed, like what kind of uh, subdivision uh, subdivision I'm getting. Uh, so I can you know scale it back and get really um, low uh, low resolution result, or I can uh, bring up the points to wherever I need it to be. And then I can make it editable and, for example, um, edit uh, the mesh manually and so on. Uh, well, basically, creating splines is really simple. As you saw, you just click and then you, uh, you, know, you can choose from the pre-made splines. Or if you want something custom, obviously, you have this pen tool that you see here. And I would suggest using um, you know, front or uh, right mode or top mode uh, when it comes to creating splines using your pen tool. So your pen tool creates the splines, just like this. You can click and then you can connect your spline. But you can also select points for your pen tool, as you can see here. And you can uh, control or select your uh, edges. You can also cut your edges. I'm holding uh, Command right now and creating cuts. And then you can move your points around, as you can see. Let's see what else we can do. We can cut. Uh, we can, I think, control. Yeah, control cuts, and then command on the Mac also cuts. And uh, if you just click and drag on the edge, it will uh, move the edge. If you click and drag on a point, it will move the point. And uh, you should stay, you know, most of the time inside the pen tool if you want to uh, control how your spline looks. And also, if you click on the spline, I mean, on the uh, point, and right click. We have all these different options uh, when it comes to splines. So you can do hard uh, transition, you can do soft transition, you can do uh, equal uh, tangent length. So as you can see, if this one's bigger and this one's smaller, and I can do equal tangent uh, either direction length, it will adjust uh, the handles. Uh, let's see what else we have here. We have a reverse sequence, uh, join segments, break segments, as you can see. You can uh, break and join segments. Uh, you can uh, play around with magnet. Uh, this is another cool tool. Let me just show you on the different spline. So this was a custom spline. Let me just delete it. If I create, for example, uh, this rectangle, and uh, right now I cannot make any changes. I have to click C to make it editable. And from here, as you can see, you have intermediate points that you can change later. And then you have your plane, and then you have your sides. So you make sure you have your size down. So for example, you do 200 by 200. You click C, make it editable. And then from here, if you go inside uh, point mode, uh, now you can see your four points for your, uh, for your rectangle or your cube. And now from here, 
uh, you can play around uh, with your um, you know intermediate points or another option you can do if you select all your uh, points here and uh, for example you forgot to round it uh, because if you create a rectangle a spline like this uh, let me just move this one over so if you create a rectangle spline or a cube spline like this and uh, you want to make a, a rounding you can right away but if you forgot and uh, you want to do it uh, manually, let me just delete and bring this one back. You can uh, always do it inside the options when you right click. When you select uh, your points and you right click, and you have this option that's called chamfer. If you click on one of your points and drag, it, it will round those points as you can see. And then from here, you have your radius. It's the same thing that you saw before. This one is just more manual. And then if you don't want all the points to be uh, rounded, you can just select one, uh, go back to chamfer, uh, chamfer, and then click and drag, and you have uh, your radius just, just on one point. So all the options you see here are kind of self-explanatory. You can mirror your splines, you can um, you know, round them, you can create an outline, you can disconnect points, you can cut points, um, you can round your points, you can split, pretty much, you know, all, all these options are pretty self-explanatory, but uh, the main thing is just how to create splines, and it's really simple. Click, create, uh, you know, choose one of the splines that you want to choose. If you want to make something complicated, you would start with, for example, a cube, make it editable, uh, click on your pen tool, and then, you know, start cutting, modifying, you know, doing soft uh, transition, or a hard transition, you can always change it. So you do soft, you do hard. Maybe you want this one to be soft, just like this. And then using your pen tool, you can modify and create whatever you want. And then when you're done creating the shape uh, that you like, you will go back. And uh, like I said before, if you click uh, render, nothing will happen. But let me just delete this one. As soon as you uh, put this spline inside one of the uh, generator objects, like your extrude, loft, uh, the sweep, and so on, uh, you can create geometry. So as you can see uh, right now, let me just adjust, for example, 200. So as you can see, uh, we can extrude our splines. We can sweep them. I'll show you in a second how to sweep. And um, we can use loft and all the other things, and it's really cool. You can create all kinds of cool shapes. So with extrude, you don't have a lot of options. It just extrudes your spline up or down. And then from here, you can play around with your intermediate points, like I said. And then you can go inside your extrude. You have the option for caps. You can do fill a cap here, and so on. You can do uh, what kind of radius, your different steps. Uh, hopefully you get an idea. Uh, so this was uh, extrude, for example, if you want to uh, use loft or any uh, of the sweep, you would just create a spline, for example, a circle. And right now the radius is 200, so let's create another circle. And uh, this circle, the radius is going to be uh, 20. So now we got a, a get a sweep object and drop our splines inside the sweep object. And as you can see, uh, we generated this uh, circle and everything's still live so you can change the radius anytime you want and same thing for this one the size of the circle and like I said to control uh, the density of your mesh uh, it's it's done using the intermediate points so if you do natural and you bring the number down you can uh, control the subdivision or you know same thing here if you, for example, do uniform and drop uh, the number here, you can control uh, the subdivision of your uh, circle. And then from there, for example, you want to drop it inside the subdivision surface. And then you get a perfect circle out of that. Uh, so that's how you sweep. It's basically, uh, you know, first circle um, is, is the radius that you want to sweep. And then uh, the second circle is the size and then you get this result. So another thing you can do, uh, let me just 
delete this and let's do uh, loft this time so you can drop your first circle when this happens and then as soon as you create another circle uh, everything will connect uh, the two circles will connect so if you do another circle for example like this and then you scale it down yeah this will happen and then as soon as you create another circle like this and then you would uh, bring this one back you get a perfect uh, extrude using four different circles and all it does if you um, let's do let's go to line mode for the display uh, it's pretty much takes the four circles and connects uh, connects them uh, it's like stretching skin over uh, bones and that's what loft does pretty much so let's go back to uh, go to shading lines and uh, yeah that's basically it when it comes to splines uh, so uh, for the quick review uh, to create spline you would just click uh, and then drag on uh, one of the pre-made splines or you can uh, use your pen tool and create splines that way and then inside each spline there's two things to worry about your intermediate points that you should change after you create your uh, geometry like your loft or your sweep and then you have your uh, obviously your radius and then uh, you know each spline has a little bit more options than other splines uh, but it's basically all the same it's pretty self-explanatory uh, but the basic idea is you know create your for example um, extrude drop your little spline inside the extrude object uh, you get your geometry and then from there if you want to control the subdivision levels and uh, how it's subdivided intermediate points uh, is what uh, controls that so as you can see I can drop it from uh, this shape and then I can bring it back all the way back to the circle that we had before. Uh, so anyway, guys, that's uh, basically it. Uh, hopefully you learned something from this video. And like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, when it comes to splines, in, in, if you're doing anything flat, uh, make sure you create your splines inside Adobe Illustrator. And then from there, you can import them using this uh, CV ArtSmart plugin. And it's a really fast way of creating really complex splines. Uh, but if you don't want to use Adobe Illustrator, you want to uh, create your splines inside inside the uh, Cinema 4D, you can do that as well. Uh, so anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, leave a like on this video if, if it helped in any way. And I will see you in my next video, guys. Uh, goodbye.